With the core four of the Toronto Ultra squad not sticking together for MW2, I think it would be timely to go over one of their main strengths uh, throughout the entire Vanguard season, and that was specifically Berlin offense during stage three. They went 21-7, and seven, an unbelievable record on offense, a 75% win rate, and they did it doing basically the same thing almost every round. So I want to get into what they were doing, what was going through their heads, what the strategy was, was like, and why teams weren't really able to counter it too often. Uh, so let's get right into it. So I'll play out their main spread here. Uh, so we would have, at the start of pretty much every round, we'd have Kleenex sit in this bottom secret door where he's not open to anyone that might be opening the door secret, and he's watching pretty much any A push through uh, of any defensive players that are set up at A that might see something, some action at B, and start pushing through, you know, either back alley or through down the glass stairs, or even get the info if they're coming long stairs. Uh, then you'd have Insight playing the cross, and he's playing this top brick spot here where he can see the A cross. And we can go over this in like a Berlin strategy video or something like that. But a lot of teams would just have one player, usually a main AR, play this top brick spot where you can see how many people on the defensive team cross towards the A site. And this was big information because the amount of people that you see is something that you can relay to your, your teammates. And that could be the decision uh, for your team on whether you want to go A or want, whether you want to go B because of how many people they're sending towards one side. So let's say you see three people cross, you know that only one is going to be B side. So you might wrap and attack B rather than keep continuing to go A. You know, on the other hand, if there's a 2-2 two -two split, it's up to the decision of, of the offensive team. At that point, it's like an option play. You know, similar to, you know, American football, a, an option play where you could do either thing. And at that point, you're just, you know, deciding based on the info that you get what you're going to do. And then you're going to react to that. So that was the main uh, setup towards the A side. And then they'd have Bance and Kleenex come over here, throw their stuns towards the uh, B cross, so anyone that might be playing the low docks here and crossing over to B or you know playing inside the B site, let's say. So they throw their stuns there just to uh, give a little bit of info towards the B side to you know so somewhat fake it towards B um, and just give them a little scared, just worried you know that there is some pressure going on. And uh, Cami would end up going into post, playing either post or going to top third. And then Bance would, he would be the bomb carrier, he'd throw his tack and then usually stay around this area until they decide what they wanted to do. And for the most part, they would end up wrapping towards A. And we'll get to that. So let's play this round out specifically first and we'll see how it plays out. So you see Kleenex going towards trains, going towards the secret spot. You know, in this specific round, he goes straight into A just because of what they see on the cross. But you'll see Insight, again, watching the cross here, the only C1 guy, and he's challenging the cross uh, you're straight on. So they know only one defender can technically be at A. You know, they could technically go through secret uh, from fire and push through that way. Most of the time, you know, Kleenex is picking that up. Uh, but this is just a straight on, you know, safe risk that they're taking because a lot of the times teams would stack towards the site. You know, the only other possibilities would be, you know, them doubling up through fire to, you know, P5 and, and trying to flank that way or just straight up stacking the B side. And that's what, you know, I believe it's Florida does in this round where they just straight up stack the B side of the site. And then you have, you know, the, the pressure from Toronto where they're throwing the stuns. So these guys are going to hear those stuns or see those stuns. And from this, Toronto is just going to be like, you know, there's only one guy at A. Let's start wrapping towards it. We already have Toby, you know, pushed up here. After Insight stops watching the cross, he's going to motion towards, you know, Red Tower, help them out back alley. And then Bance with the bomb is going to start motioning towards here as well because they need to start planning, obviously. And then Cami, he can, from post, either keep watching post for anyone that could be pushing through from the B side, knowing that they might be going A at, at the moment once they don't see any more pressure. And he, he could play any, you know, lurkers trying to either push through post or push and go to top third or just play top third himself and watch uh, this plat cross for his teammate while they're planning. So there's a lot of possibilities and it, it's such a super structured offense out of them because they're just straight up playing off of this cross info. You know, if 
two people are there, most likely it's still gonna be a wrap towards A because it's easy site for them to take. You know, if there's three people there, that's when, okay, you know, let's go to our plan B by going B. So that's the mindset to, that they're thinking of. And you'll see in this round, you know, they only see one guy A. Toby pushes up to bomb, tries to clear out the rest of bomb for them. And he even gets pushed up because he sees the spacing. They only know one, they know one guy's there and they know he didn't push into the site. So he's gonna take some spacing out of them. Cammy gets a Kleenex, or Cammy gets a clean. Cammy gets a kill inside post uh, on someone trying to lurk through post and, and try and flank while they're going towards A. Bans makes his way to A with the bomb. Insight plays Red Tower for anyone that could be pushing through deep through B or uh, you know just watching the back alley. But they, they know, obviously, no one's back alley, as we said before. So at this point, he's just watching the cross deep from B for anyone doing a super mega flank uh, for anyone uh, yet yeah, there. So you see them push up into bomb. Toby gets another kill or one kill on someone, you know, bottom fire. He gets a timing on them. It's an easy plan. And it's a 4v2 at that point. So they win the round. Here we go again. Another offense for Toronto. It's the same exact game. They do the same exact thing. Kleenex pushes up to A. They watch the cross. Two stuns B. They, they see that two have crossed. Uh, but one actually does the rugs jump. So we can get into this more in some more Berlin strategy, but teams would watch the cross and on defense, you try and fake that out for defenses by then jumping through to rugs and baiting out two people crossing, but you actually only have one person in A watching the site. So they still see two cross and they're like, you know, we do see one guy challenging at B here, number six. So, you know, let's just, you let's take it back A. Like it worked the, the previous round and you know they even you know cross over to this tank side too just to bait it out even more for number eight here and even if number five was watching too he would get baited out by that while these two other players push through to a to clear cleared out the site so they know that the site is clear so that their team can eventually take it they clear out the site and entire team motions towards their cami instead of playing inside post this time he just plays right side of p5 he can still see the dub cross here and he gets another pick so you know, it, it's just working off your info, gathering, you know, the troops together, pushing the site, getting a pick off that, and then planting the bomb. And you see a 2v1 here, another easy round for them to win. All right, the same game, next offensive round. What do you know? It's the same thing out of Toronto on offense. They only see two cross. You see Insight actually holds the cross and sees number seven back up once again. So they know one guy is only at A, so... Again, let's wrap it back towards there. Cami goes top third. They bring the bomb over. Kleenex is going to go and, you know, just watch the back alley just in case number five hit back alley. He is actually staying inside these desks here in A. And again, they only know one is cross. So Insight is going to go from watching the cross here to watching the beef push through uh, from Red Tower. Same exact thing as that, that first offense. And they actually, you know, try and make a play instead of going straight into A. They're going to hit out secret and go this way. It's just another thing that they can do, especially with, you know, Cami top third here watching over them. And they're just going to make a play. They go inside fire this time. So there's a lot of mind games here because they're doing the same exact thing, but they're just hitting a final route that's different where they're going inside fire to clear out, you know, any stragglers here. They, they catch out number seven, who was the one who backed up. Uh, that insight saw at the beginning of the round they catch him off guard and then they can you know just take it together they they go towards a and it's the 3v2 just play your numbers at that point plant the bomb and they get another round win so just to show you guys that i'm not just nitpicking one specific game you know this is a map against london now and they're going to basically do the exact same thing almost you know just a little different because insight was number seven here he's usually the guy watching the cross but since he has this deeper left spawn they just were probably afraid that he wasn't able to pick it up in time uh, with this spawn so he instead is going to go boxes and show pressure towards b like bance would and bance is going to be the one to pick up the cross he's just the closest one here so they actually just leave the bomb in spawn because you know bance was their bomb carrier so he and all of his intention was just to watch the cross and then pick up the bomb regardless. And they were just going to option from there, obviously. So they see one guy cross. I'm not sure if they see number one as well, who's trying to chow the cross. But I, I believe he's trying to chow, you know, this uh, cross spot instead of the top bricks one. And they see one cross. So Bance gives that information. He goes back, picks up the bomb. Kleenex is already pushed up towards A. He's going to clear the site. 
you know, Insight actually even gets a pick towards B with that pressure. So that causes number one on the London side to rotate back towards B because they're going to think that, you know, they got the pick B, that they're going to keep going B. And, you know, they don't know that. They double reverse them, uh, Toronto does, and goes back A. They get an, actually another pick on the guy who, who hit the, the drugs jump. And they just take the bomb site, plant it, and for a 4v2, easy pickings from there. Even the next round here, same thing. And, and you see, actually, they go back to their original setup because Insight does get the closer spawn. He doesn't get that back left spawn that you saw in the previous round. He gets his normal, you know, close one. So he can pick up the cross this time. Bands can now play his regular, you know, just throw the stun, pick up bomb towards B. And it's the same setup. It's the exact same setup. I think this is even the, the next match right after they played Florida. And you see Insight... They're playing off of him and what info he gets. He sees that two cross or one crosses and one's challenging him on the cross. So, you know, they're going to start motioning towards A. You know, actually at this point, Kami does get a pick. So they're going to do something different than the, what they did last round where they just start motioning a little bit towards B this time too. But you still have Kleenex number eight playing inside trades, playing for anyone that could be cheating and trying to push through to A, knowing that, you know, they could be going towards B. And that's exactly what he does. He, he sits basically in a corner and just waits to try and get a timing. He actually does end up getting a timing on this guy back alley. And they kill number four trying to hit through quickly. And it just bites Lennon in the butt because now these guys haven't committed towards B. You get number four. So now you're just going to, you know, wrap it back towards A because why not? You, you've already killed one there. It's a 4v2. You have the bomb site control because you know only two cross at the beginning of the round. So at maximum... You know, there's probably only one more. That's what they do. And, you know, Kleenex even hits a route towards fire to try and get stragglers once again. And they just take it from there. They win the round without even planting the bomb. So it's like, at this point, how do you counter this team doing this? Um, and Atlanta had one round where they completely countered it. And I'll show you also an LA Thieves round. But I'm surprised a lot of teams start didn't start doing this earlier to them. And one of them was just, let's just stack A with three guys, you know, make them at least uncomfortable going towards B because, you know, they keep wrapping towards A, you know, it would be a, a spread to start, they get the info, and then they'd always wrap towards A, it would be very rarely there where they would wrap towards B, so at least let's just try and make them uncomfortable with that. So this is what FaZe does, they send 3A, you know, Kleenex does get a kill, but he gets traded out. And then it's a 3v3, you know two are already still pushed up A, at this point, you just want to, you know, plant the bomb B. Thing is, like, you don't have that much experience planting B with all these rounds where you keep going and wrapping towards A. And this is where, you know, B close plant should be, you know, a, a set round win. But maybe on Toronto side, they just don't have as much experience, you know, getting the bomb down B side. So, you know, post plants for them might not be, you know, the best suited thing for them. Atlanta gets a nice pick on the guy boxes. They teamwork the guy that's planted bomb and stayed in bomb. And as the 3v1, you know the last guy's playing clutch and you just focus him. So that was a really good job out of Atlanta with that play. And here's a round that I like from LA Thieves. Like they ended up losing this round in a 1v1, but they have the complete counter to this. You know, I was waiting, waiting for some team to do this when I was watching Toronto, you know, actually completely you know, annihilate teams doing the same thing over and over again. You know, it's at this point, it's like, you know, why not just you know, either do the rugs jump and hit P5 or just straight up go through fire so he doesn't see you on the cross and, and hit P5 instantly or just, you know, wait there while Bance is trying to wrap towards uh, A side, you know, catch him rotating through P5 or catch Cami that might be top third. You know, those were ideas that I was thinking, you know, if we ended up playing them later on, what we would do. And, you know, this is what LA Thieves does, you know, Actually, they do, they do both. They have one guy do the rugs jump and one guy hit low fire. So they do see one guy cross and one guy challenging the cross, pressuring you know, Insight. But they do have these two guys hitting up P5 instantly. They catch bands crossing, going towards A and wrapping it. And they get bombed down right in the middle of P5. So, you know, they ended up getting picked right here by Cami. But if they get that kill, they for sure win the round. And at this point, it's a 3v3. It ends up becoming a 1v1 that... uh. I believe it's Cami ends up winning, but you know, that was the, I thought best counter to what they were doing. And um, yeah, so that basically was the entire game plan for Toronto offense on Berlin during stage three. They 
annihilated teams on it, We're winning pretty much every round. A 75% win rate on offense for any map is absolutely crazy. You know, Berlin was still offensively sided, but 75% was just blowing everyone out of the water. So wanted to give you a little detailed explanation of that. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video.